adding confusion to the politics of climate change and global warming in the press is the assumption that the terms weather and climate are at the same level interchangeable. The two terms are confused with one another, presumably because the same elements solar radiation, temperature, humidity, wind speed and direction, precipitation, etc. make them what they are. But there is more to the story. The main difference between weather and climate is duration. Weather and climate relate to one another in much the way an inning in a baseball game compares to the whole game. The weather is the set of conditions in the atmosphere in one location for a limited period of time, such as a through the day, at night, or any particular point during the day. When the local meteorologist says that today will be partly sunny and 80 degrees Fahrenheit with 10 mile per hour southwesterly winds and high humidity, he or she is talking about the weather conditions for some portion of a given day. Climate, however, describes the average condition of the atmosphere over a long period of the time, such as across a span of 30 years or more, for a given location. Moreover, weather conditions change from hour to hour and even moment to moment for a single point, neighborhood, town or city on Earth's surface. Climate conditions, on the other hand, are far less volatile and they are often used to describe large areas such as a part of countries, holy countries, or even a group of countries. Climate conditions are also differ between one part of the planet and another. We know that Africa Sahara has a, has a much hotter and dry climate than South America's Amazon River Basin and Alaska's rocky coast. The forces that shape the atmospheric condition in each of these parts of the world are vastly different. In the Sahara, high pressure combined with a tropical locations allow for more solar radiation to reach the ground and heat it through the air. In contrast, the conditions of Alaska's Pacific coast are governed by the region's proximity to the ocean, its subarctic location, vast differences in the numbers of daylight hours between summer and winter, and the warm ocean currents that circulate nearby. It's easy to see why people who equate weather and climate might not see the problem of climate change as a big deal, since the weather is always changing. When climates change even slightly, however, the consequence can be much more severe than the afternoon of inclement weather. In the wild, specialized plants and animals that have evolved to adapt to one set of climate conditions face the challenge of being thrust suddenly into conditions that do not suit them. In the human sphere, once predictable climate conditions become more volatile and crop yields decline because of increased risks from unexpected flooding, drought, or the effects of unseasonable cold snaps. Organized wind systems occur in spatial dimensions ranging from tens of meters to thousands of kilometers and process residence times that vary from seconds to weeks. The concept of scale considers the typical size and lifetime of phenomenon. Since the atmosphere exhibits such a large variety of both spatial and temporal scales, efforts have been made to group various phenomena into scale classes. The classes describing the largest and longest lived of the phenomena is known as the planetary scale. Such phenomena are typically a few thousand kilometers in size and have lifetimes ranging from several days to several weeks. Examples of planetary scale phenomena include semi-permanent pressure centers discussed above and certain global circling upper air waves. A second class is known as the synoptic scale, spanning smaller distance, a few hundreds to a few thousand kilometers, and possessing shorter lifetimes, a few to several days. These classes contain the migrant cyclone and anticyclones that control day-to-day -day weather changes. Sometimes the planetary and synoptic scales are combined into a single classification, term the large scale or macro scale. Large scale wind systems are distinguished 
by the predominance of horizontal motions over vertical motions and by the preeminent importance of the Coriolis force in influencing wind characteristics. Examples of large-scale wind system include the trade winds and the westerlies. There is a third scale class phenomenon of even smaller size and short lifetime. In this class, vertical motions must be as significant as a horizontal movement, and the Coriolis force often play a less important role. Known as a mesoscale, this class is characterized by spatial dimensions as 10 to a few hundred kilometers and lifetime of day or less, because of the short time scale and because the other forces may be much larger, the effect of Coriolis force in mesoscale phenomena is sometimes neglected. The small microscale circulations or eddies don't really do much to our weather, but a somewhat stronger sea breeze can make a big difference on the summer's day. A sea breeze develops when the land areas become warmer than the ocean surface. The land heats up more than the ocean on a summer day because the mixing that constantly occurs in the water. The surface water might heat up, but the mixing prevents the ocean surface from being warmer than the land. The warm air of the land is more buoyant and rises, so low pressure develops over the land and relative high pressure occurs over the water. These are flows from the low pressure from cooler sea to warmer land and test the sea breeze, you might remember from the previous chapters. Urban climates are also are distinguished from those or less built-up areas by difference of air temperature, humidity, wind speed and direction and amount of precipitation. These differences are attributed a large part to altering the natural terrain through the construction of artificial structures and surface. For example, tall buildings, paved streets and parking lots affect wind flow, precipitation runoff and the energy balance, balance of a locality. Also characteristic of the atmosphere over urban centers are substantial high concentration of pollutants such as carbon monoxides, the oxides of sulfur and nitrogen, hydrocarbons, oxidants and particular matter. Foreign matter at this kind is introduced into the air by industrial process, such as chemical discharge by oil refineries, fuel combustion for the operating motor vehicles and for the heating of offices and the factories, and the burning of soil waste. Urban pollution concentrations depend on the magnitude of local emissions sources and the prevailing meteorological ventilation of the area. For example, the height of the atmospheric layer through which the pollutants are being mixed and the average wind speed through the layer. Heavy concentrations of air pollutants have a considerable impact on temperature, visibility and precipitation in the around cities. Moreover, there occasionally arise weather conditions that allow the accumulation of pollutants of areas, especially urban areas, for several days. Such conditions term temperature inversions. You learned that in the previous chapter, increasing air temperature with increasing altitude. They strongly inhibit atmospheric mixing and can cause acute distress in the population and even under extreme severe conditions, loss of life. Atmospheric inversion caused the air pollution disaster in London in December 1952, in which about 3,500 persons died for respiratory disease.